so it's very important that there are these local beables. We're talking about particles, but these particles in quantum theory are point particles. They're zero dimensional. And that goes very much against our experience of everyday objects. We can't really even, con you, you don't think no, so? You have no experience of everyday objects at mi mi microscopic scale. That's why we call it microscopic. Mm -hmm. You have zero experience of how big a particle is, right? None. Nothing. I think that, I, I mean, I think that this is a perfectly good response to the, the objection. So my everyday experience cannot at all rule out the existence of zero dimensional objects. I mean, look, we, we often say if you're, if you, for some weird psychological reason are very upset with point particles, fatten them up a little, right? Make them little spheres. I make them little statuettes of Mickey Mouse for all I care. It doesn't really <laughs> that, matter. That would be an interesting theory. It would. <laughs> <laughs> but to do that, suppose you, you rate for yourself, suppose you have this objection, this worry about, yeah, I have no experience of point particles. What a strange thing a point particle is. Then consider two theories, like Tim said, the point particle theory and then the fatten theory. And then realize that the structure is such that the, 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 the two theories explain everything in exactly the same way. Ask yourself, which theory will you then prefer? Should I more should I complicate the theory just to satisfy my prejudice or not? No, I think that's I a prefer the simplest theory. The simplest theory. No, that's a very reasonable point. But I I do think from my reading, it's hard to remember where I get certain things. But it's often touted. This is really orthogonal to our discussion, but it's touted as a positive for string theory that we can abandon the point particle model and we do in fact have these little one di I, I don't know how much better one dimensional is and then there are zero brains too yeah, but... can i make a comment about that uh, i i mean i've heard ed witten several times um maybe everybody has seen these Feynman diagrams right so you just have yeah. these diagrams that, uh, look here are two electrons and then here's a little virtual photon that runs between them and then the two electrons it's kind of scattering right and, and one of the things that motivated Witten, and this is one of these places I understand the motivation. When you try to do quantum field theory using these diagrams, you have one piece of mathematics called the free propagator that takes care of the pieces of the diagram where there's no intersections, where the things are, as it were, just going straight, okay? But then you need to, to take care of the point in the diagram where, where three lines come together right, where there's an interaction, say, between the electron and the photon. And that requires entirely new principles, entirely new physics. You have to write down an interaction, and you can't derive that from the free propagator at all. And, and Witten didn't like that, okay? Now, if you, if you turn these little point-like things into strings, into, into closed strings, kind of round loops, and you do the same diagram, it now looks like kind of a fat H, um, if you can picture it in your head, if you make all of them strings. And there are no points on the surface of that H that are fundamentally different than any other points. So his idea was, well, then a single propagator will work everywhere. And that's a cleaner theory, right? Rather than having the free propagator plus this other interaction term, somehow it's all bundled into this one thing. And that also made him think this would be a much more constrained theory because, because in the first theory, I can give you the free propagator, but then there are all kinds of interaction terms you can throw on top of it. And in this theory, no, it's just one propagator. So from, from a kind of aesthetic mathematical point of view, I understood that. And that you, that you would gain in string theory, at least at that level that, of understanding. I mean, that's the way he explained it. Uh, you know, string theory doesn't work. I, I, you know, there, there was never any reason to believe string theory, but that particular feature of it is one that you're helped by not having point particles. So that might be what they have in mind. And something else they might have in mind, some of them certainly do have in mind, and on a, let's say on a simpler level, quantum field theory 
somehow based with involving particles instead of strings, suffers from, famously, notoriously suffers from infinities. And the infinities has to, the fin infinity has to do with how small zero size point particles are. The idea is if you can spread them out a bit, by eight, for example, I'd make it a string. Instead, you're going to lessen the infinities. Things will get better. It could be that when you, the arguments you've heard were, were based on those kinds of considerations. Those are, those are reasonable considerations. They technically may or may not be correct. You have to see, one has to see how string theory works, but they're reasonable considerations. The argument you first gave, oh, a point particle is a strange thing. It's much better to have a string without based on any technical considerations. That's just sheer rhetoric. <laughs>